Hey everybody, my name is Chris, I work at Still Alive Studios and I run a Discord server dedicated to all topics game development. We had another terrific collaboration with Heart Machine. We already had a sound challenge where we redid the sounds. Wow, that was a hit, you know, and it's like if there's too many of them, you're, you're like, you take it for granted, even though every single one is amazing. And now we came back and rescored the Hyperlight Breaker trailer. And the amazing thing is that Joel Corlitz joined our session, the original composer of the Hyperlight Breaker trailer music, and feedbacked all of our entries. There were 24 entries, we looked at all of them, there's a lot to learn, and we had a great time. Let's go. So you teach, Joel. I do. So this this will be, I'm thinking of running this like a critique, although I should ask you what, what works. I also teach uh, sound design at the University of the Arts in Zurich. This is right up our alley. So I'll t let you take the lead. I'm just here to host and to be here and to marvel at everything that is being said uh, and enjoy the show. That's <laughs> basically what I'm here for. I, I'm excited to hear what everyone did. Um, you did know, you I, listen I'm to them to... or not? Because we thought, oh, it would be I, nice no, if we would I, get like- I thought we in... would do it live. Yeah, that is great. Amazing. Yeah. That's cool. No, and, That's cool. and so you'll get a fresh, you'll get a fresh take <laughs> yep. for me. Um, you know, and I'm happy to talk about, like, I don't need to, you've all heard what I did. I, and, I, and I'm not going to evaluate anything or react to anything based on what I did. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm happy to talk about how I approached it. Um, I'd also love to hear about how all of you approached it. Um, you know, I, I should say, you know, cause I, I don't want to, I don't want to make this about me talking. I, I'd love to hear from, from most of you. Um, that said, this is a really hard task. Um, it is very rare to have kind of a thematic, um, melody and identity piece be created at the very beginning of a development process. It's very rare. Um, more often than not, I find that it, that it evolves organically out of establishing a design language, um, living with it for a while, and then usually approaching, I mean, cause we, what I did for this is sort of like a main menu theme. Um, it probably, it, it might be the first time it, it, it's definitely a rare occurrence for me to do that first. So, mm -hmm. um, if you came up with something for this, you've done something, I think, really hard so congrats <laughs> <laughs> well we'll listen to them yeah i'm sure we get some some insights well I, I can tell you a little bit about our challenges i mean the sure yeah i would love the, to hear the server we have is just born out of you know we're a game studio i work at still alive in austria and we have established i i I created the server because I teach at at the university and I really like how, you know, just sharing the knowledge. It's, it's all about sharing the knowledge, talking to people, inspiring people, helping them along the way. And I thought, you know, I have done this for a class. Why not bring it to a Discord server? So I created this. I get a little bit of time to run this and we do some challenges because in, in, in daily live, you have rarely the chance to just sit down and say, oh, let's create something fresh, something new, something. We're always deadlines and you have to do the next thing. And so we have these bi-weekly challenges every two weeks where I post a clip and then everybody makes up their thoughts and tries to come up with music for that clip. And we kind of set a rule of do it in one hour. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. It rarely ends up being an hour these days, but you know, we're kind of like an hour, two hours, maybe three hours. Some put even more even time into it is, depending. Yeah. Yeah. Depending on how I love that process. <clears throat> now, that really resonates with me. I think this so much of what we do uh, for audio and games is it's about assessing the function of a piece. And I think the best way to do that is to just not overthink it. And sometimes imposing a time limitation is exactly the best because, way to do that. Because then you can make a cut and move on. You learned yeah. a thing, 
um, if you spend, you know, two more weeks, three more weeks, it doesn't add much to that experience. And it's really about the practice. So do something, do it for two hours, then the next challenge comes along, new clip, do something else, learn a plugin, learn a technique, look what others did, and then kind of, you know, it's like daily practice. People who play an instrument have to practice daily, and we do that as well in sound design, in music composing. This is kind of the, the gist of the server. I think that's great. Then, hey, Troop. Hey. We're a nice little group. Kat's here, Danny's here, Alex. You know what, what, I, what we do in class? Tell me whether you think this is useful. Um, I like to have the composers make a, a brief statement not j sort of just to practice what the right amount of prefacing is because it's really easy to do too much mm -hmm. and, but i think it also it's also a nice if there's a way particularly because we're going to be hearing all these once and for the first time mm -hmm. anything that can help focus our thoughts or attention about what the concept was i mean if there's one thing i've learned teaching a music for games class it's that there is no one way to do anything. There's a million things that'll work. And, and we went through a lot of iterations in this trailer. Um, I, you know, I know, like I said, I mean, the, the easy, the, the simpler way to say what I was trying to say earlier is it's really hard to make a trailer for a game that doesn't really exist yet um, because you're establishing a design language and you're also yeah. trying to articulate an idea in that design language. But um, so there's a, but there's a lot of ways to do that. And, and I would love to just hear a little bit about what method you chose, because I think it's far less important to try to, you know, there, there's no one correct expression of anything, but I think you have to know what you're trying to do. That's all. Mm. And so I'd love to hear about, um, what everyone, what everyone's concept was. All right. So Alex Epton, we have you in the chat. Tell a little bit about your thoughts before we go into this. Okay, so like my two sentence explanation is like, I saw the original trailer. Mm, I noticed that it had some like kind of synth wave noise detuned synthesizer thing happening. And I was like, cool, I want to do that, but I want to do like Ghost in the Shell or something and just make it violent. But like with that synth wave kind of vibe to it cool. if that makes sense that's my that's my preface okay then let's watch And that was rad. All right. Great work, Alex. So what, Chris, what works? Should I just, is it, is it helpful for me to just react and give you my perspective? And I think so. You, you got to take it with a grain uh, of salt, obviously. Yeah, you know, definitely. I did definitely. Like one version of this and in a lot of iterations. Um, so my gut is like the energy and the, and the confidence is it's like, it's badass, and it's, it's right on for the vibe of this. I think the main thing that I would change if I were to ask for notes, in fact, let's do it like that, because that's kind of what I do in my class where it's like, all right, mm -hmm. if we're going to revise for next week, or if we're theoretically going to revise for next week and we're done with the unit, I give notes as if we were going to revise. Um, I tend to try to give notes more like a developer than a composer, because I don't care what chords you play. I don't care about any of that stuff. I will never tell you what notes to play, um, even as another composer. Um, I don't think it's useful for what we do because what we do is functional. Um, so I think that the, in terms of tone and, and seeing this character just like, you know, just totally destroy every enemy in this, in this trailer, it's great energy. I think the only, the main note that I would have is, is just structure. Um, I think it, the drop comes in um, pretty early. 
And I think if if you were going to save it, I think you could save it for after the missile dodge or even at the actual title reveal um, because there's so much action and there's so much density that I think if you, if you put the drop in too early, you run the risk of um, just too many things competing, which I think you've done a really good job mixing it. And I don't, I didn't feel like it was, um, it was messy or anything, but I do think that there's so much happening here that I think we really have to think about and control what the listener and the viewer is it is going to be able to digest on one viewing, which, you know, like all of us have probably watched this dozens of times, but most people are going to watch it once. And so I think just having that perspective, and I, this is probably a note, this is a note that I give myself and a note that I will almost always give is try to keep, try to keep the perspective of someone who's only going to ever see this once in mind and just let things breathe, let them unfold slowly and think about where the musical focus is at any given second. That's, but, but I think you've got the core, which is the, that's the most important part because you can sculpt that however you need to, which is like, it's got great, just like badass energy for lack of a better term. Um, and it really works for just this, like this violent, just, you know, visceral experience. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. the time. Yeah, my Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. This is fun. My postmortem on it was very similar. It was like uh, everybody else posted their clips and I was like, "Ooh, mine really fights with the sound design." Or it could have been it could have had a clearer theme, I guess. You know, like I don't know. It's just it seems like a bunch of stuff strung together and well, it's all good stuff, like maybe it's not as presentable as what you're saying would be desired. It's also like the grain of salt that I want you to take too is that I know that these are mostly probably a first pass. And, you know, it's like my, what you heard that I did, and I'd be interested actually if any of you didn't hear what I did and, and just went for it because that would be really interesting. But mine is not a first pass. Mine is the result of like 50 iterations. <laughs> so I, you know, I've been through it. Like we, we explored this a lot to try to find the best expression of everything. I think it is also worth keeping in mind just, you know, thinking about the title because this is a follow-up. It's a spiritual, it's a spiritual successor to a well-known title. Um, that should be a big moment because up until then, aside from the fact that you know what video you clicked on on YouTube, um, you don't see the title yet. So it is, a, there's, it's a reveal moment. So let's go with Val. I know he's here. Val, come up to the stage. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hey. Right. Uh, so, yeah, just as a preface, I, um, we did, we firstly did the sound design challenge, which was a ton of fun for me. And I really enjoyed working on the, on the, on that trailer. I thought it had a great energy. So I was very tempted to do the music challenge as well, even though I'm not really interested in music composition that much. I got one of the free bundles like a couple of months ago from Plugin Alliance, which uh, offered a, bun of, a bunch of Brainworks uh, plugins, including Brainworks Obenhausen or something like that, which is a synth that sounds really great. And I experimented a lot with it. So yeah, I tried to make something a little synth wave, a little retro. And I, um, yeah, I really tried to focus on like transition and being impactful. <laughs> That's about it. Cool. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah. Then let's give it a listen. Right. Nice. Well done. You know what I realized we're missing in this is the title reveal. Just in general. I think we didn't see it in the last one, did we? 
Yeah, that's correct. Mm. Yeah, I think that's because true. it came from the uh, the sound design only version. Yeah, exactly. No mm. on the title. Okay, so so it it will be structurally different to to the actual trailer um, because everything is kind of a lead up to the title. Um, but that's <laughs> that's fine. So I want to try to evaluate these then kind of on those terms. Um, the energy is great. I, you know, I think that my absolute favorite part of this is how you're laying out and kind of like punctuating the dust clearing um, and the character mm -hmm. flying through the air and landing that that's my favorite part because I think that in that moment, you are really letting the music and sound design work together really well. Um, and, and I think the energy, the, the build, particularly the beginning, how you're setting the stage, it all works great. Uh, I think similar note, um, I think it may get going a little quickly to the point where yeah. like, once you start that kind of like that drum pattern, which is fairly straight, um, it tends to just want to keep going, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's hard to, it's hard to break it up. Um, I mean, you, you laid out during a, one of the bigger moments, which I think works. Um, but I think that could probably come much, much later. I think the sound design is so rich and kind of, and like I said, visceral and, and contains so much of the energy in this trailer that yeah. it is, it's easy to compete with it. Um, so I would sometimes, you know, it's a, I think it's a worthy exercise and, and you can do this by just muting stuff just to see like, yeah. sometimes i question you know and it's it's i'm not even telling you just to mute stuff but like sometimes it's worth trying just like how little can i get away with like yeah yeah i know that like it's it, it's it's the same in sound design as well yeah. sometimes it's yeah. worth like taking out elements and re you realize that you do, don't need that much in fact yeah, yeah and it, it might be worth trying i like i think you know it's and it's tough because it's like i'm seeing these once and reacting um so i'm hope hopefully i'm giving you useful stuff to work with but but I think the the main thing is I think you set the stage really well, and, I, and then I think once the once the beat comes in, it does repeat a little bit. Mm. I think when it's re when you're really thinking of like I can tell when you're really kind of using the sound design as a way to kind of provide um, just like a flip side to the music. I think that's when this is really working. I would keep pushing it in that direction. Yeah, yeah my only like big regrets about it is that I probably should have like lowered the mix of the music a little bit to give more room to my sound design but because like listening it right now it seems a bit loud uh, it's tough it's like yeah I mean these I I'm expecting all these mixes to be fairly music they're all going to be mm -hmm. composer mixes that yeah yeah sure all, I call my own mixes composer mixes sometimes because it's like you're gonna you're gonna emphasize the part that you just did because that's it's natural to do that um, sometimes it does just take, you just have to spend a little time away and then come back and be like, oh yeah, I have to, I'm going to take the music <laughs> down by like 12 dB <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, that's like what, that's what's happening right now. You're actually working on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it's another really great start. Thanks. Any famous last words, Val? <laughs> no, thanks. I uh, really appreciate the feedback. So that's, that's nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, Hunter, you are. You have one, so yeah. let's cue you up next. What's your entry statement? Yeah, so I'm a huge fan of Hyperlight Drifter. Uh, and so I wanted to kind of, uh, in the beginning and end, kind of replicate the sound of the original soundtrack. Um, and then in the middle, kind of add my own spin, because obviously the trailer is a, has a lot different of a pace, a lot faster, more action-heavy pace than the original game. Uh, so I tried to add my own spin on it. It's my first time uh, composing for a trailer where you have to like time stuff to what the sound design is and to how uh, like the trailer is paced visually. Uh, it was it was very fun to do. Cool. So I let's love that you're thinking about the sound of of the successor, the kind of the musical language and and even sort of just the the brand of a of, of a game is so important in these trailers and i that's I'm, i love that you brought that up all right then let's listen
You know what's so so cool sometimes about just getting to hear a lot of these back to back and just different approaches is they all to me tell kind of like a different story. This completely changes the narrative of this mm-hmm. trailer. Um and and my inter- my personal interpretation of this and is is that this is just like this is nothing for this character. This is like a walk in the park just kind of based on this it, this is a much kind of lighter approach um it's less you know it's it's less like synth wavy and dark and it's kind of more like positive it even felt in some ways kind of kind of i don't know like breezy in a way um and it it changes my whole perception of this character not the well of this scene where it's like none of these enemies are a threat in this with this backdrop it just this is like a walk in the park um it's it's a really interesting approach i think um you've definitely captured the spirit of the series in this piece i think you know i can definitely like i really appreciate the thought that you put into the fact that this is this is a hyperlight game and the trailer feels like a hyperlight game um you know i all that being said i don't know that this tone is quite quite the right approach for this particular trailer but i like i like how you're thinking about it and i like that you that you've managed to conjure something that feels related to the series it's tricky because a trailer is kind of its own thing and sort of stands alone and also it needs to feel related it needs to have tell a story it needs to have a certain kind of energy it's 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 a there's a lot to think about here um but this is a really like this is a really interesting unique approach yeah thank you so much uh, and thank you to the people in the chat as well yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i mean this is this is one of the great things of this challenge that you get so many different versions some really compose something to fit the whole mood and the narration and the trailer as a whole, some just experiment, and you get, as you said, these different moods and and compositions. Some are light, some are very very heavy, some are way off, but also give kind of an interesting perspective from a totally different side to the whole mix. And I think all the hor- broadening of the horizon, even if it doesn't fit the trailer, it still evokes something in your head um and and broadens the the sonic horizon right this is what i what i really find fascinating about all these challenges actually yeah i agree it, this you know we'll hear a lot of pieces today and and i think yeah. that um it'll be interesting you know, a couple days from now to think about which pieces stick out and they're generally i i found generally that applies to the pieces that took some risks and and like like you said, I mean, it might not be necessarily the piece that is like the one that nails it on the first try, which, by the way, is a totally overrated metric, I think. Um, nailing it on the first try feels good sometimes, but mm. generally, like, you learn nothing from it. And, and and I think sometimes it's better to sort of, like, take some risks, do something unusual that sticks out um, that I think then is it's more memorable. And and I think that that that's a good example of a piece that that that'll stick out. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. You mind if I ask a question really quick? Yeah, sure. So, um, just about the kind of the concept of a callback to the original game. I think in the sound design challenge, I asked about this, where um, Troop said that there wasn't a whole lot of um, Sonic like carryover from the first game. Uh, to this one, mainly because of the change from 2D to 3D. Um, but I was wondering, maybe a question for you, Joel, and Alex, possibly, is like, is that is there any carryover in the music? Was that something that you are doing in the actual game? It's something I think that's probably, to to be fairly transparent, is still somewhat in development. Although for this, for this trailer, um, it's hard to quantify, but I think our goal was to make it feel like a hyper light game without making it feel like specifically like drifter i know that's a fairly general answer but i think but but then of course it 
it prompts the question like, well, what does a hyperlight game sound like? And how um how can we how can we riff on that in a way that's recognizable but also feels original? So that's a huge part of I think what we were trying to do in this initial trailer is um try to figure out how to expand that musical universe. I think something that sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, yeah, I think you captured it well in that, like, it's a hyperlight game, but there's only been one hyperlight game. So what is the second hyperlight game? And if you think about like Mario, like the sound of Mario isn't an NES chip, you know, it's the style of music. And in Mario Galaxy, that can mean it's orchestral, but it's still sort of thematically very obviously Mario. And so I think it's the challenge of like coming up with the second game in the series is actually like the hardest of any of any the third game it'll be like oh we've got two examples you know but right now we've only got one example so i feel like i've been really impressed Joel, with the way that you've like pushed for that hyper lightness without being too rever uh i guess reverent to the the drifterness um which has been definitely like a, a tricky thing to find yeah and Mario isn't about the instruments necessarily or the chip. It's it's about the spirit, you know. And and I think it's similar to any any series where you kind of have to figure out what the spirit is and how to conjure it and evoke it in a way that doesn't just feel like you're rewriting the most famous piece from that series. So I we sort of had like a, I guess kind of a not a pact, but like we were like we are not gonna just recreate panacea like and we're not going to use riffs from it um you know but but it also like there's a certain kind of impressionist tonal sensibility to that piece and a lot of the pieces from drifter that's to me that's like the perfect territory to mine because you can create a new piece in that sort of tonal and spirit and and have it absolutely translate and i think the trickiest thing about it sometimes is like it's really hard sometimes to describe like i i've i have a lot of practice talking about music and communicating about music but i also have the have enough conversations kind of in under my belt to know that like you can have a great conversation about music and have it be totally meaningless when you because when because you have to go write something and create something so i think some of it is we just like we know it when we hear it. <laughs> it's like, does mm. this sound breakery to you? You know, it's like, that's sort of a question we've asked each other. And, and sometimes it does. And sometimes it, it may, maybe pushes it too far. So. But this question is super hard to answer because you said you did this in the beginning and there, there wasn't a lot of breakery reference. You're exactly right. And style, right? It's a question that was like to do this first before we've even really kind of gotten a chance to live with what Breaker is and what it sounds like. In some ways, it was really beneficial because it was a it was a total crash course in like, let's establish something that works for this universe. Um, and and all these questions that I'm sort of just bringing up in all the internal thought process, I think is is very much what was on the the top of our minds as we were working on this. Um, yeah, and if I can kind of jump in, like a, a, another um, like complication to it is that you have all these different zones to do, and so they all have to sound distinctly different. And it's almost like what uh, was created for the trailer feels like you know pure to the to the core of like what's fundamentally kind of in place for for all of those. And so it's been interesting internally because I'm you know I, I work in sound design and mix and stuff. I'm not working on the music. So I just get to like consume the stuff that you guys are making. And um, it is uh, it's really interesting to to like see the different ways that you're, you know, utilizing that and moving it forward. We, we keep having to expand into like completely new areas and, you know, the experimentation starts again, you know? Yeah. Mm. Um, but it's it's really awesome like i feel like there's a, a a good a good base now um through the whole game thank you yeah that's yeah it's such a big part of what we do as composers that's why you know it's like that's why a big part of why i kick this chat off with you know acknowledging it this is hard 
Like we're asking a lot of questions. We're trying to answer a lot of questions. There's a lot of heavy lifting in this 40 seconds of music. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for your insight on that. That was great. <clears throat> Sorry for the interruption. Good. Then let's move on to Danilo Capel. He's here as well with us in the in the Zoom. Danilo, what were what's your intro? Uh, hey, uh, first, uh, thanks, Joel, for doing this. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, my intro is that uh, I tried not to be influenced by anything from the previous game, and I wanted to score it as a video game trailer, not a hyper light trailer, if that makes sense. So I just focused on the beats, and I wanted to add like some sense of levity and fun to it because it seems very, very fun and animated. So that's that was my focus. And the uh, aesthetic, the visual aesthetic, I just tried to embody that. So it's great. OK, then let's listen. I really appreciate hearing your concept too. And I think that what you did is absolutely valid. I think in some ways it it does make sense to approach this like just as a trailer and what you did works. And I think the irony of it is that it does sound related. Like it, this sounds in the universe enough that I totally like, I'm like, yeah, that, that sounds like it could be in the hyperlight universe. Um, and I think that you did such a good job of like, I appreciate the the idea that you use the word levity. There's just enough. Like you didn't go, it's not too much, but it's enough to kind of keep it fun. It makes it seem like um, kind of almost like a, like a really tightly choreographed dance, um, which, which is really a cool, a cool kind of vantage point for our interpretation of this. Um, I, I feel like I'm, this is maybe just me. I'm probably just going to nitpick a little bit about just structure and sound design, just because there's so much going on. I think that the beginning could maybe come in a little slower, but that's a structural thing. Um, I think that the, that the, the mood energy level, all the core components work really well. Um, the other thing about, about your, your approach and kind of approaching it like a trailer on its own terms is great because you've established a structure and a mood and an energy level and kind of all the core components of what a piece of music needs to do to support this. It would be pretty easy to sort of take a moment here and be like, could you make that more, more uh, breakery? <laughs> you know, once, whenever we figure out what that is, um, you know, it's like, you've, you've got such a good structure and baseline that it's, it's very easy to provide feedback here where it's like, Hey, can you lay out for that moment? Can you, can you dial, you know, something up there or down there? I think that like, that's how um, I tend to sort of, when I'm not thinking like a, a composer um, and in my experience, that's kind of more how game developers think about this kind of stuff. And this is, this is a great, like I would, you can hear this and you, you know exactly where you'd need to go next. So well done. Good. I mean, this is, this is an incredible first stab. Thank you. Yeah, I really liked the sync points, if that is the technical term for it. <laughs> so really all the, if you come down, you had a sync point, all, all the stuff, uh, the shooting, etc. So I was really impressed by that. Really well done, Daniel. Not that I'm an any authority to, <laughs> to critique your work. <laughs> Uh, okay, I hope you are not mad at me. I'm very happy with uh, <laughs> <praise> <laughs> <always>. <laughs> okay.
Cool. Um, I have to drop off in a mm-hmm. little bit to go pick up my daughter. I'm going to try to pop back in for the end of it. But I just wanted to make sure that a couple people who couldn't be here, if there is time that their re- videos get reviewed also. They're just folks from our community who wanted to be here, but the time right. didn't work out. I just Can you tell me there. which one? Is that yeah, Aza? I, I posted example? in... I oh, posted in the, in the chat. chat Aza, Haltfire, right. and some Sirs. Haltfire just joined. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Yep, that is cool. Hey. Yeah. Everybody and some. Yeah, I saw that. So let's not forget these. Cool. <clears throat> then who do we have as well? I mean, mine is still here, but I kind of. But yeah, so let's let's if so, Aza's not here, but Halt fires here. So let's let's take yours. We have Scott. Scott's here. Is that yours, Scott? Yeah. Yep. You can hit mine. Oh, if you all like. right. You dare skip that one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going from top to bottom. Don't worry. So let's go with Halt fire and then Scott next. So Halt fire, do you have any? words to share with us well then let's just have a look at your entry oh yeah can't talk at the moment just briefly stopping in before i head out with classmates all right appreciate the time yeah so let's just watch And the ending there. Nice. This kind of pulse approach is like my gut when I first heard like the pulses at the beginning was like, yeah, that's a pretty, that's like a badass way of, of kind of communicating this, this sort of confidence that, that I think is a huge part of this trailer. Um, I think to me, and and this is, I think this has often happened to me as a composer getting feedback from developers. And I'm, I'm going to probably give something similar here, which is that first, just that like straight pulse. There's something that's so simple and elemental and like, and just confident about it that I think you could keep that going for almost as long as like it overstays its welcome. Like just I would I would just try to keep it going until you're like this doesn't work anymore, um, because there's there's something about it that works. I think um, t- so. You know, to that to that end, I think mostly this is a structural note uh, just about the way it builds because I think the way it starts is really interesting. I think the way it actually sort of falls off and you hear that shadow of that pulse is really cool too. Um, and and I think that in terms of you know, thematically and and kind of where this builds, it's, it's a really, it's another piece that I think takes some really interesting risks and reframes the whole perception of this experience to the point where this is like, this to me seems like our central character. This is, this is just like nothing to them, Um, which is cool. I mean, it's, I think anything, anytime you can watch something and have the music tell you something about it and have that be a story, um, it's done, it's done something effectively. You know, I think the question then would be, well, is that, you know, is that the right story? Is that the story we, we want to tell? But I think this is, this provokes a lot of thought. It, it's a really interesting approach. Very cool. Then feel free to say something in the chat. Um, hold fire. In that case, I will queue up Scott. Scott, what are your thoughts? What were your thoughts? Oh, okay. So I didn't watch the original, in fact. Oh, so the clip okay. was That's... completely my only reference for this. Uh, the first thing I noticed, it had great sound elements right to start with. So I wanted to try to make space for the mm-hmm. existing sound design. I didn't want to sort of step over that too much. Also, the fact there's a lot of bright sort of neon colours. I wanted to keep it very synthy. Um, 
I also wanted to sort of tie the music to the action as much as possible. So really hit the cues uh, as closely as I could. The other thing was focus on some of the parkour elements that are in the video. Um, and towards the end, bringing bring in sort of like a galloping element as as that charge to the end happens uh, with a big build up. So so that was the focus that I brought to it. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. Then let's go. Wow, that's really cool. Great musical sound design elements. The story that I get from this, I don't know, you know, and anyone feel free to jump in and tell me if you, I mean, I may be the only one, but like to me, this, the story that this tells me and, and that this, this piece of music is communicating to me is that this character is coming in to take something that does not belong to them. This is like a modern, this is like a super modern, like heist in a really cool, inventive, thoughtful way. And so I think that's great. I mean, was that, was that part of the, the process at all? I don't think it was intentionally. No, not no, initially. That's okay. No. I mean, this, and this is just what I'm getting <laughs> but that's, from it. So that's it, a nice outcome. That's a really nice yeah. outcome. Certainly. Yeah. No, I was curious to, now I haven't done much scoring to trailers, so I was curious about the the process of hitting um, action points, but also making room for sound design and whether that worked or not in this case. I think I think it did. I mean, I I I think the the first thing I'll say about it is that it's clear that you're thinking about it, and I really appreciate the fact that you're thinking about it. Um, you are you are being very thoughtful and very intentional about trying to have the music and the sound design work together to create a some more, you know, something that's more than the sum of those parts, which I think is very effective. Cool. It's tough. Cause it's like it, I almost think about like, and I, and you've kind of done it here. I, the way that I, it's, it's sort of an oversimplification, but the way that I think about it in an experience like this, is is the sound design is um, almost functions like the percussion track exactly um which is you know which doesn't mean you can't have percussion too but it's like it you kind of want to let it be the the driving energy um mm. that's just one approach really i don't want to i don't i want to be careful here about saying that this is how you do it because it's like nobody really knows <laughs> this is the truth that's the <laughs> truth that's the big reveal here is we, none of us really know it's just i think really like iteration and composing for things like this, it's really more about what knowing what to try and what to do next, if that either succeeds or doesn't succeed. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you've, you've, I think you've covered a lot of, of great ground with this. Um, and I love that you're, I'm, I love that you're integrating musical sound effects too. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. That was actually quite really a lot cool. of fun because yeah. The first one happened by accident, and then when when I listened to it, I thought, "Yeah, that's really cool. I'll add that in in a few other points." Yeah. A little bit of a humorous point, but you know, where the where just before he fires the missile, I, I added that extra little sound in, just sort of the to add uh, complement the expression on his face. So yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Yeah, very nice. Happy accidents. This happens yeah. sometimes. This is so cool. One thing leads to the next, and then an idea starts rolling. That is great. Okay, we have Antonio here. He has also an entry. Tony Rebello. Tony, do you want to say something? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, so salutations, Joe Carlitz. <laughs> I'm from Brazil. Um, 
the trailer, the well, it dropped here sometime between, I don't know, March, May, I can't remember now. And by that time, I wasn't even starting as a sound designer. And well, my short story here is that this is the first thing I've ever done for wow. design and composition. No, that's awesome. That's great to hear. <laughs> uh, that, well, actually, this project was, uh, and i done that with my bass teacher. I started as a bass line for the, the game itself. I saw the challenge on, on the server. And then I started to compose that as, as a, a bass. I was learning uh, the virtual instruments and how can I use everything to make sound and music together. And it turned out to be a uh, awesome project. He, he, my teacher even got proud of me <laughs> because of that. <laughs> that uh, is cool. It, uh, it's a trial, and I did the exact opposite of I think it's Danny Capel. The my intentions were the exact opposite of that. I was trying to maintain that as much as I could in the universe, using that the using the the, the aesthetics and the visuals. And the fact that I've played through much of the first game, so well, it felt natural to do such thing. Use the synthesizers as much as I could. Cool. All cool. right. Let's watch it. really nice instincts on this one i especially love how you <laughs> ended it i i think the theme that you establish and kind of it has this it's a it's a great sound it has a really good sense of mystery it's an it's a really effective way to set the scene kind of what you do it you did at the beginning uh, i think by the time we go into the action sequence i think w it's probably worth evolving it a little bit or maybe even seeing if it works without it because i think what it does so well in the beginning which is it establishes kind of a sense of danger and mystery and it feels dystopian and modern um yep. it i think it sort of slows down the combat in a way that it might just be it might be worth seeing what happens if you expand on it or even just take it out or or, or do something different um but you know i think I think your instincts about kind of like where to overall, you know, aside from that element, your pacing and the way that you've structured this, like they're spot on. Like this is, I'm really impressed. I, this is your first <laughs> approach at doing something like this. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I've listened to many things and I, but let's, let's simplify. This is my first uh, time using Reaper, using virtual instruments and actually putting in sound effects in a, trailer that had its music taken off just yeah. for us to work on the on the, the part of the music i actually inserted some visual sorry some sound effects to accompany the music yeah, i'm i'm really impressed i mean you i think your instincts are great i think it's just really about sort of smoothing things out figuring out yeah. um you know how to evolve certain things um and i think figuring out kind of where that theme goes and what to do with it would be the, the I think it would make the most sense to start there, but I think it it really works. All right, that's uh, uh, that's genius to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, my pleasure, Tony. I'm also I'm impressed. I know quite well how when I started with all the DAWs, my first door was Logic. Just wrapping your head around the concept of tracks and MIDI notes and virtual instruments and the routing and stuff. This is so complex. Yeah. And the, the whole journey, uh, because I live in Switzerland, so Switzerland has a lot of mountains, is mm -hmm. kind of like a hike to the mountains, right? You see mm -hmm. the top and you start walking. And when you reach the top, you realize you're not even close to the top because you just saw the first kind of 
right uh, slope yeah. and then you're on the slope and then you see the next one and so it's it's this kind of step by step approach that you've mastered your first second step you see a whole lot more now you have a big overview of the landscape before you so you're ready to take the next one and and go up that hill it is a great journey and you have you really yeah. are on it that's this really cool exactly yeah how i feel it's just a, a a small milestone for now and then oh my god there's a five more mountains to climb yeah you realize you realize what you don't know yet right the next step exactly that is cool okay. thank you yeah, all so nice. much for this <laughs> good then aza i saw the twitter messages very enthusiastic about it as well so let's have a look at aza's entry next This is what I okay, one of the things I love about this and and doing critiques like this. This happens in my class all the time. There's always, not always, there's often a piece that makes me um completely like contradict what I like what I said earlier and totally eat my words. So there's I've said I've reacted for to a few of these um that the drums kind of need to come out through the through the sound design section. In this one, they don't. And like, and I, I'm not exactly sure why, like it, it'd be hard to do like a whole analysis about it, but there's something about the consistency of, of this piece. And maybe it's the simplicity, it's drums and a bass pulse that actually helps. It doesn't feel like it fights the sound design. It actually sort of takes us through that section in a way that I think provides a lot of momentum and, and feels actually really good. The only thing that I think the, well, I have two nitpicks about this. One is obvious. It needs an ending. It needs some kind of way of when when our character puts the, puts the staff back, you know, puts it away it, right there. Um, we need some kind of like acknowledgement of that or the piece needs to end in a way that feels intentional. That's, that's sort of an obvious thing. Um, the shift from the intro to the kind of the middle section, I think could be finessed a little bit more. But um, once it got going, I was like, and and Adam jumped in the chat and said, like, this is a bop. And I, I, I agree. I mean, there's something about this that just like, it felt good. I didn't feel like it fought the sound design and it just kind of kept things moving and, and worked for me. It was very well timed in the beginning as well. It kind of complemented the sound design and hit, hit the beats of mm -hmm. that pretty well as well, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, agree. I feel like this would be really good, like level music, where you're just like cruising through a level. That's mm. what it feels like, a little more than a trailer, but uh, yeah. still, still good. Nice one, Aza. All right, then um, let's move to some CRS. Let's go. It it does feel like I'm I'm just I'm tracking the chat too. And I, I agree. Like it does feel this feels really badass, like especially in the beginning. Um, I you know, every piece is so different that it's like it's so, you know, it's easy for me to be like, you gotta come out and you have to have a shift here, you have to do drums here. And really like piece like this makes makes you realize like everything just needs to be kind of evaluated on its own terms. But I do think we like the 
the bass kind of like the that like drifty those gritty drifty like bass notes in the beginning they work so well for the intro Mm -hmm. um that i think i and i think they could stay in potentially like i'm i'd kind of want to try to experiment with like what does it sound like if you take them out and then really dial up the percussion or what if you left them in and sort of like made them made them stronger over time like i think something just needs to change a little bit because um they they sort of there's they're pretty consistent throughout um but they also like having a through line like that also really kind of demonstrates the sense of confidence which is a huge part of this trailer um that i think works too i just want to try to like massage those elements and figure out you know where the changes need to go and and how things evolve but the overall tone of this is like really rad yeah it is i really liked <laughs> that there was a little video editing going on and added yeah. the 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 end screen and then took some time to fade out mm-hmm. deliberately that was quite cool i do like seeing the end screen so we still have some more to go i want to be mindful of your time we are now one hour in i thought this could go on a little bit like uh, one and a half hours or something if that's sure. okay for you joel yeah <laughs> then we still have a little bit of time so let's take my next <laughs> okay because i'm curious um i use these challenges i'm no musician i'm no composer i do more sound design my approach was purely out of the practice a little bit of using your tools get out of your comfort zone i had a really hard time lining up the beats of the trailer to my music i had a little bit of help from alex Epton he kind of showed me how he does it. So I tried to come up with uh, these speed ramps so that I hit the marks, etc. So I struggled quite a lot. And then I lo- thought a little bit about the music, um, the style of it. And what came to mind for me is quite of an, the action sequence of this parkour element. And I really wanted at some point to do these, you know, 80s style synth wave musics with that rhythm of so that was kind of my goal how to bring that in here and then experimenting with synthesizers etc so that was my purely out of experimental uh, joy it yeah i think you killed it that's really good (laughs) it's i i think you approached this like kind of like sound design in a way i mean it's all it's musical clearly but the but the way that it it kind of is communicated in phrases and gestures it works really well with this um the tempo works really well because there's enough space in that tempo that the sound design can come through. And, and this is such a great example of tempo. Like this is a very energetic trailer, but the music communicates intensity and it's a great compliment to what else is going on because the energy is already there. We don't necessarily mm-hmm. need more of it, but having more intensity to complement that energy just makes this feel like it brings out another dimension. You've got these cool like arpeggio runs, these flourishes that to me were like, were such a great nod to the the kind of like floaty, almost kind of like dancer-like qualities of this. And they brought out just enough 
of that lightness that kind of like we've touched on it with a few of the examples that maybe had a little bit of a lighter touch they 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 were just enough to communicate that this is like this is an easy thing for this character this was so there's a lot here and it's really well balanced and rich you that, you, you really did a great job thanks yeah. as i said it was when uh, blind chickens also find a, a piece to eat <laughs> That's a German saying. So, but yeah, yeah I just experimented. Uh, and yeah. That's cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. You're, it's clear that you're, you're reacting to your own work. That's one of the hardest things that we all have to do is we have to react to something we're, we're creating as we're creating it. It's not easy, but as a sound designer, it sounds like you've done it a lot and, and you were doing it. I think the fact that you were experimenting with some new tools and, and maybe a different side of that craft allowed you to actually take that role in a different capacity. And it's clear that you were doing that. You were really aware, I, I, I could tell, of, of what each piece you created brought to this. And, and it, it's very thoughtful. I can, it comes through. Nice. Thank you. Then... There's one from Benedict. Let's watch his. Cool. This one, this one is, a, it's all about energy and it goes for it and it works because it has this one. It has the courage of its convictions. It's like, all right, <laughs> this is about, this is, it's a really well sculpted piece that takes us through this whole fight sequence. And I think it works really well. That's great. Yeah. Benedict, good job. Also we had then potato girl. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That was, that was heavy hitting. Yeah. Tempo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. This so what is are your so thoughts? carefully composed to, I think what's so clear about this one is that every moment is, is really like, this is one continuous gesture. And, and I think that, you know, I think some of we've heard it. Like, it's so interesting. Like I said before, to hear all these back to back, I think, sometimes where these can lose a little bit of of steam is when we and i do this all the time like when you start looping material especially if you're doing something that's like a chord progression or a beat or a melody it's very easy to just like copy and paste it and this doesn't do that ever <laughs> you know this is like this is one piece that's it's it's like a, like i said it's like a continuous gesture that where every single thing that happens is like so carefully considered um, that it's like it's like a it's like a sentence. It's like a beautifully crafted sentence that just like it just culminates in this like really like intense, awesome moment. And it's really really well done. I love all those tempo changes. I, someone just said that in the chat. I think it's it's really cool, really really good. Yep. Nice job, potato. Marian Valchak.
great tempo, great sense of intensity. Those sounds and those chords were, felt this feels hyper lighty. Ooh. A, yeah. In a way that doesn't feel like it's just trying to like it. it I don't think anything today d does this or, or, but this feels like it's related to the universe in a new way, which is what we were going for with this. It's great. And it's subtle. Like you hear it and you're like, Oh, I hear that. Mm -hmm. And I connect with it and it connects with this, but it's, but it's still like, this is such a good example of a piece that supports this so well and and uses just an does just enough does a few subtle things that you notice and you're like yeah I, like i i can hear that and it's not over the top but it's elegant and it mm -hmm. it's it's really tasteful so what would you say makes it high uh, hyperlight breakery that's that's like the million dollar question right it's like <laughs> it's, it's i don't know i know when i hear it but, oh, all know, right. I think it's 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 sort of this combination of um I think mostly well no it's everything it's it's like it's it's a combination of the actual character of the sound generally the sound is and and I think we've been hearing a lot of kind of like pitch instability I think it works in mm -hmm. this universe there's something about yeah. it that just provides this sense of mystery and instability it feels modern and yet it feels kind of um, like also sort of decrepit too and like a really kind of cool duality um this has that so some of it's the character of the sound and some of it is like what the sound is actually doing in the actual notes it's playing i think one it it breathes it's spaced out it has space yeah it um it's it's not trying to do too much and it's not too active and some of it is the actual harmonic character, which is, uh, I guess, for lack of a better word, it it feels it, it has an impressionist quality to it. The the chords are kind of expansive and um and and evocative in a way that feels kind of old and new at the same time. Cool. Well done, Marion. Yeah. The real Dilip. Oof, yeah, goosebumps. Really chills. Yeah, totally. Like there's something about this one that it it's this is really evocative. This is like a you know, it feels related to the to the series, but this is like this is how to score a trailer, you know, like this felt like such a such a well thought out expression of this trailer and and creating a sense of intrigue which i think really is the job of any trailer mm. yeah very very well done real delip yeah right trace callahan you're up trace This one has some some Thomas Newman vibes, I think. A another approach that really kind of reframes the experience of the trailer with this. This feels like a normal day <laughs> mm. for this character. 
uh, in a cool way where it's like, this is just kind of, this is the routine, you, you know, you wake up and, and have this battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the, <clears throat> the choice of instruments. It gives such a fresh take to everything that yeah. we have heard with the bells. It's really something totally different from another perspective again. Yeah, me too. Uh, that's cool. Really nice trace. Uriel Alcaraz. Let's have a look at yours. Yeah, that was so good. So well timed. And just the, just the sounds and the sense of space. This is this is a good example of one that I think really really works with the sound design and you know like kind of it makes space for it. The tempo works so well thought out in terms of pacing. A lot of thought put into it the whole uh you can tell. Yeah. Synchronization. Yeah. Then we have Yellow Dog. I know he wanted to come, but I think works and uh, is looking forward to the recording. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I think, you know, it's, this is definitely a different sound for the, for the series yep. um, as a trailer. I think it totally works. I actually don't know if it needs to go up to that, that, uh, that like kind of climactic level though. I think it worked at the sort of like it, it has, you know, we've got the intro and then it builds on that with the pulse develops it a little bit. I would be curious to see what it would do if it just stayed there and, and kind of developed that as much as possible without um, the choir. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's nice to hear because it's like, all right, maybe that was too much. Let's try pulling back. Um, that's an easier note to give than let's do more, but it, this works. I mean, I, I think it kind of, it makes you think about like, and we've kind of already touched on this a little bit. How much does a trailer need? To, like a trailer can stand alone. Like there've been plenty of times when there's a piece used in a trailer for a game or a movie or whatever that doesn't appear in that game or movie. This could work for that. Like, you know, it, like, I, you know, I, I did spend a lot of time saying we need, you know, we thought about the, we thought about the series and what sounds breakery and all that stuff. Um, and we kind of landed on an approach where we wanted the trailer to sound like that, but you know, in a different universe or for a different process, you could just do something that just fits this trailer. And this, this does that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really nice yellow dog. Let's do one from Jake Coronado. Let's go. This is a great example of a piece that is higher tempo that nails it to me. Like there, there's something about this frequency range and just this, like this kind of build and approach that just, 
like i love that it you know we we're kind of like we're watching these and at least i'm watching these i'm thinking about like stylistically things that seem to work slower tempos space things like that and then you hear a piece like this that doesn't fit that mold and still works and works really well this is like this you get such different energy from it it's mm -hmm. it's less like badass energy and more like that looks so exciting and fun and like i can't wait for it yeah it still maintains a sense of danger mm -hmm. it does yeah that's really nice <clears throat> all right get to the chopper <laughs> that is your clip This one is like a this feels like an action sequence like in a in a really cool way in a in a modern way that that feels specific to this trailer um but yeah this this almost feels like an under this is like a cinematic underscore to this scene what is the the difference for you for a cinematic underscore versus for game trailer it you know i don't it's that's another thing it's hard to answer it kind of you kind of know it when you when you hear it mm. i think to me this this feels like the score for and 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 i mean this as a compliment like this feels like if this were you know a 40 second scene from like a longer movie or a or an episode or whatever this is the underscore to that scene with a trailer it's it's diff you know it's like to me this could definitely be tweaked and adjusted to to be adapted as a trailer but to me it a trailer is kind of like one continuous thought um where this actually right. feels like it's almost attached to a larger whole mm, okay yeah get it it's a real cool scene as well get to the chopper <laughs> <laughs> such a cool name uh, Julian Ferreira. There's a sense, there is like a I'm I've got the chat open and and some of you are saying that like they're about the the brass stabs or Adam was talking about the brass stabs being emotional and I I agree like there is an emotion in this one that kind of gives you like it gives you this sense of intrigue and and it turns this experience this visceral experience into an emotional experience um, which which is a really cool thing to pull out of it feels like revenge yeah yeah and it's a very cool combination between those brass elements and the synth rhythm that goes on underneath yeah that was also quite nice cool very good job julian then stone from the sky which is our last entry it was a quite a popular one it's the first time i think i had to because we do this all in, into a compilation so that we can put it out and, and put it on Twitter and celebrate us a little bit. This was the first one where I had to do five compilations because I couldn't shrink them down and make everything in one big 20 minute video. That is really cool. So it was quite popular, <laughs> this challenge. Alrighty, Stone from the Sky, you're up.
that was great. Really good mix too. Everything was super clear. And yeah, this is something that really impresses me that it kind of tiptoes around the sound design without it being obviously audible. It's just yeah. natural. That is crazy. It's really well done mix. Yeah. And that just, I mean, it goes to show just how important that component is when you're working with, with, with sound design that, you know, such a crucial element in, in an experience like this. Um, yeah, like really great tone and sense of confidence in, in a different way. This is, this is like, I mean, it is, it's, it's got a badass sense of confidence in a way that also feels like really kind of off the cuff and cool. Like it's, this mm. is like, this is a little bit more kind of like detached. It brings all these different kind of subtle shifts, bring different perceptions and interpretations to how this character feels about this situation. Very well. Yeah. Then we have come to the end of everything we had to show in our little community regarding the Hyperlite Breaker music challenge. That was a lot of fun. Thank you for sharing them all. Whew, that was quite a session. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Thanks so nice. much, Chris, for running this and Joel for sharing your expertise oh, and giving feedback. Pleasure. Thanks, EE, for setting it up and for having me. How do you want to do it with the hoodie? How are we going to, to do the giveaway? Oh, yeah. So, Joel, you have to pick your favorite. <laughs> I should have taken notes. Um, um, do I have to do it right now? No, you don't have to do it right now. We can, oh, okay. we can announce it later. Cool. All righty. Yeah, I sent you I sent e the link, tough. I think, to all the entries on the Dropbox so you can have a look okay. as well, and then we can announce it at some point. Okay. That is great. I say thanks to the Heart Machine folks for showing all, so much support to this little community we have going on. This is a and great the, community. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> for all the time, obviously, you have things to work on and your lives as well. So it's really, really great. We appreciate the, the support and the feedback and just the really positive vibes. That is really great. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, thanks, guys. Really motivating to watch all of these. Really motivating. Yeah, I wouldn't, have, uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Much. I, I wouldn't have known about this if not for the Heart Machine Discord. So thank you for uh, making me aware of that. This is really fun. Well, thanks for participating, everybody. Yeah. Thank it you. Means a lot to us. Let's see if we can do anything in the future as well, just to have some fun together. Yeah and postings and talk about it then thank you very 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 much for your time everybody i wish you a pleasant friday evening in my case <laughs> or friday end of day or morning and nice. a happy weekend and then we see each other at the next sound and music challenge thank Bye. you joel see you later everyone true lucas and Tony. Nice. Nice. that was awesome Val, Scott, yep. Bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs>